Hey Captains, this is Karendar. Today I'm going to offer some tips and strategies to help progress through World of Warships at a decent pace without having to spend a ton of money. And as you get established in the game, you'll find you shouldn't have to give up a lot of content if you're playing for free. Now most of the tips I'm going to offer are fairly simple, but the execution of some of these require more detail than I might go into here in today's video, just to keep this from becoming a two-hour extravaganza. I do have more detailed videos of nearly every suggestion here today, so if you find you're not very familiar with the topic of one or more, check the description below this YouTube video where I will have a quick access timestamp menu for the topics covered through the video, and I'll also include links to specific YouTube videos on the subjects if you want more clarity, and this will save you some time searching. Now let's get into some tips. First of all, if you haven't created an account yet with World of Warships, or you've been away from the game for more than 90 days, get an invitation code from a friend or a streamer on Twitch. Most of us have links for players in our About pages on our Twitch pages, and the rewards for creating your gaming account through one of these invitation links is significant. 5 million credits, a week of premium time, tier 2 premium ship Diana with a 9 point commander, a healthy stockpile of consumables, when you get to tier 6, play your first battle in that, you gain another 7 days of premium, the British tier 6 war spike battleship, and a 10 point commander on her. And this will help you earn more credits and train your British captains more quickly. It's a great kickstart to a new account or somebody who's been away for a while. Next I recommend to get yourself set up and play a little bit on the public test server, or people refer to it as a PTS. Simply use the same email as your live account, and playing through a few easy missions each update will reward you a good selection of signals, camo, some premium time on your live account. The PTS is usually two weekends per update, and a, a big extra plus on this is that you can try things out for free. Captain respects, ship builds, you can try different tactics and strategy when you're on the public test and push, see if something works or fails, and it doesn't affect your live stats. And you can easily progress up a tech tree line to see that if you're interested in that line before you end up grinding it and spending your time and credits on your live server. And this can be an invaluable savings. Maybe you don't like the line. For any of you that don't have any premium time, you're best off to save any premium time containers that you do earn for special weekends that offer bonus first victory XP like the 100 or even 200% weekends that we see from time to time. These containers are always the last to be opened so you are able to save them. And stacking bonuses really adds up. My next recommendation is find yourself a clan. Even if you're an introvert and you don't like interacting or playing with other people, you can search for those lone wolf clans and there is one for everyone. The bonuses from clans are very significant. Depending how established the clan, you can receive up to 10% more coal and steel, 5% XP, 10% commander XP, 25% free XP, and the cost of every tech tree ship you purchase and the post-battle repair costs are reduced by 15% each. These bonuses and the discounts, they really add up fast. Plus, if you do like people, You'll learn and improve more quickly when playing with friends or clanmates, and better gameplay equals more credits and XP. One of the best sources of free content in this game come from completing collections. There's currently 19 collections available for captains to work on right now, and the prizes are very diverse, ranging from consumables, premium time, 10 point and special commanders, to free permanent camel like the five that can be found in the two year anniversary collection all the way up to a tier 7 premium ship that can be unlocked with the King of the Seas collection. I've included the spreadsheet that I created for my collections video that you can print off for quick access. It lists and details all of the available collections to date, and you can see that many can be started for free or with just purchasing the first container in the armory for 1,000 coal, and then completed for free just doing daily missions. Most collections are very easy, and many are not costly in terms of playtime or game currency. After you collect your first piece of a collection, go to the collection itself, check and see if it has this collect toggle. If it does, what that allows is every daily container that you earn from then on has a chance for a playing piece for your collection, and you can finish these types of collection for free. 
An extra little tip with collections too, these automatic collecting ones from daily containers, don't use your duplicates. Let the collection finish by itself. And what this allows, every duplicate sells for 15,000 credits when the collection is completed. So if you don't use duplicates, it, it can take quite some time. You'll have a number, of, uh, a number of duplicates. So you can end up earning a few hundred thousand extra credits from each of these collections. Another great source of resources for this game is received by completing campaigns. And there are several available to work on right now. If you're newer, then focus on the easiest. These are the lowest tiered missions and they have a ton of little rewards. Premium time, consumables, credits, free XP, commander XP, perma camo, premium ships, commanders, and even some doubloons. Non-premium accounts, you can have up to two campaign tasks in progress, while captains that do have premium time can work on three. One important mechanic to note is that any premium time containers that you earn say through the public test server rewards. When you do open them, they give you 24 hours of premium time. And in addition to the 50% bonus XP and credit, it opens the third slot for the campaign tasks. So don't forget this anytime that you open a container. Any task that you do choose will remain in the game until you get it completed, regardless if your premium time runs out or not. So if you earn several of these premium time containers, my suggestion, open a single container, Work on your campaign task, save opening any other premium containers you might have until you've completed that previous campaign task and are ready to unlock that third slot again for a new objective. And this will allow you to progress through the campaigns more quickly than if you just opened, say, four containers and maybe you got one or two tasks done. Perhaps this other way you can get four or more. There's additional little things like being able to repeat an already completed task and you only need to earn enough stars for the final task of each mission tree, not completing all the tasks that are listed there. Again, there's more in-depth details in my separate campaign video. It's important to focus on your daily missions every day. Try and complete as many of these as you can. And also, the recurring mission chain, which is based on repeating these daily missions over and over for several days throughout an update. These all reward a surprising amount of consumables with some steel, a couple of port slots, some free research bureau points, that kind of thing. Port slots are normally 300 doubloons each. Sometimes go on sale for 150, rarely at 75. If you do ever find them at 75 uh, doubloons for a port slot, that's the time to spend a few of your saved up doubloons. Grab a notepad, make some, make some notes, and take a few minutes to go through all of the events, dockyards, combat missions, their requirements, and take a note of the ships. Also, the battle modes you can use. Many of these objectives can be completed far more quickly in scenarios or co-op missions when those are allowed. Also, take a look at your campaign missions you have chosen. Do any of these overlap? Because if they do, you can save a ton of time. A few minutes of organization can save you many hours, and you'll find your in-game time can be far more rewarding than just hitting the seas randomly. And remember to watch the dockyard, even though you might not be completing it and you're writing it off, take a look at the objectives up to even the middle point that you might get uh, completed because the rewards there can be quite generous with premium time, consumables, coal, permanent camouflage, doubloons, and sometimes even a mid-tier premium ship. So just do your best to try and find overlapping missions because this is one of the easiest ways that you can make big progress in this game. One of the overlooked parts of the game is the armory. Almost every update, we have free bundles there that we have to manually collect, which go in, down to the bundle, click the collect button. Usually 14 items over 21 days. And that includes free credits, consumables, premium time, doubloons, and like this update, we have tokens. And pay attention to these events with the tokens like this. You can buy consumable bundles and sometimes even ships from this. While we're in the armory, one thing we should look at is the doubloon bundles that are usually available each month. Usually about 1,500 doubloons. I don't recommend chasing down this path. It is worth taking a look to see if that very first bundle is the grand prize, the ship or the, the huge consumables bundles or whatever it is. Then at that point, we have a decision to make if that has enough value for us to spend the doubloons on. Now for free to play commanders, 
the free doubloons that we receive are very slow process, so spending these very wisely is advised. When you're in the armory, also remember that many items like ships and ship upgrade modules, these come with discount coupons that renew on a regular interval. Ship coupons refresh every six months and 25%. Same with the upgrade modules. And these upgrade modules can increase the duration of a ship's consumables like radar, hydro, engine boost. They're fairly costly and should only be used on tier eight and higher ships that you do play quite frequently and you enjoy. You're better served early in your career to save that coal to acquire premium ships. And when your coupons are available, you will see them as a discount ticket stub on the purchase screen of the ship or the upgrade module that you're looking to purchase. Also on the very top of the screen in the armory, you can see under the coupon section the date that the, the discount coupons will come available again. Definitely be patient, wait for your ship and module discounts when buying things, and your resources will go a lot further. Oh, and a quick note, if you're purchasing a coal ship, the system will automatically default to using your steel when you complete a purchase if you don't have enough coal. Just pay attention to what the transaction details are at the bottom, unless you never plan on purchasing a steel ship. One last note on coal. If you are collecting, and you should be, to try and get those coal ships, these premiums are some of the easiest to get, but Select resource containers from your daily containers. This will seriously boost the amount of coal you get and speed up the acquisition of this type of ship. Also, in a similar way with free XP, you don't want to waste this stuff. It's difficult to earn at times. Take advantage of those big weekends. Don't fast track your ship lines. And you go, this is for two reasons. One, play the ship so you get better in it. The better you are in it, the more XP and credits you're going to earn. When you get to a new ship, it's fine to use your free XP to maybe buy the B-Hull and the extended range modules, but the rest of it to get into the ship past that. Play the whole line. Do it the hard way. Pay the iron price. You'll already be 80% better than the rest of the community out there. A battle mode that I truly appreciate is scenario or operations. These offer good XP and credits are mostly tier six, some tier seven, and the playstyle requires captains to learn map awareness, playing objectives, having practice working with teammates. It's a great change from random battles, ranked or even co-op, and definitely more rewarding than co-op. A really good way to earn consumables from premium time to several 10 point captains that you can get for free. Often, your main combat missions and even the campaign tasks allow you to play scenarios. And these are a great place to rack up a large number of, sh of ship kills. Scenarios are very worth your time, and you'll find they're very enjoyable, especially after you've played a few times and learned what to expect. Now, every new captain, regardless whether you have premium time or not, is always going to run into a credit crunch. So a tip that I can offer is to remember to sell off your stock modules from your inventory. With perhaps the exception of the two different gun calibers on the Tier 9 and Tier 10 German battleships, you can freely sell off all of your stock modules from your inventory. I didn't actually know this myself until years into the game, and I had millions of credits sitting there. It was like winning the lottery. The stock modules themselves are very easily identified in the list because they are marked stock modules. So once you've done this, you can go back, check your ship, you can see that the research modules are still there. The stock modules are now gone and would have to be repurchased if you wanted to use them. Another opportunity for free content in World of Warships is play the different battle mode events that come around. The lower, usually lower tiered brawls, uh, they're typically like one week events. They, uh, small teams, lower tiered, a lot of fun and good rewards. Ranked battles, the rewards are usually good with this and the skills that you hone in any of these competitive battle modes will aid your ability to perform much stronger in random battles, and that always means more XP and credits earned. If you're a newer captain, though, be comfortable with the ship that you're going to play, if, especially if you're trying to get into some ranked battles. Stay in the lower leagues until you get some experience, the bronze, and that's because you're going to struggle to win in the higher, the higher leagues, and that'll just frustrate yourself and your teammates, and you don't want to get in over your head. Next, we're going to touch into how to maximize your credit and XP earning. Have you ever earned 
uh, 65,000 commander XP from a single battle? Well, you certainly can. And you start by getting consistent in a couple of your ships. You want to watch YouTube video on how to play specific ships, ask questions, and lots of practice. Then, smart use of signal flags, like the 20% heal boost on battleships, extra flooding chance on torpedo build destroyers. Save your signal flags, though, for your higher tiered ships. You earn them on the low tiered ships, spend them on the higher tiered. They have way more impact on those upper tiered matches, and that's also where your credit earning potential is the highest. So playing stronger, consistent games is the beginning. But then, to seriously boost this, you save your premium time containers, your best flags and camouflage, and you stack these on those weekends where we see the special XP bonuses. They're 100% or even 200% bonus XP on our first victory in a ship. These usually last four days or more. So you, you use a premium time container, you stack the best camouflage, XP signal flags, free XP signal flags, all of those triangular dragon flags, you maximize those. And then if you do have premium ships, you do that on them because they offer another 50% on top of all of this. And you'll see these numbers incredibly multiply. And especially when you start looking at uh, adding in clan bonuses as well, it really adds up fast. I can't stress enough how important it is to get this right early in your warship's career, not wasting any of your special consumables. It really matters. Go into more detail on my credit and XP video. That's worth your time. One extra mini tip for advancing more captains over the longer term would be once you reach over tier five in ships, if you've enjoyed that ship, keep the ship and leave the captain there when buying your new higher tiered ship. There are operations and frequent events like brawls that require you play certain tiers, and most of these are low. So hang on to your favorite ships and captains. It doesn't take long to earn those first few, say six commander points anyways, and retraining for new ships, it costs you half your commander XP. So a better value in the long run is definitely train another captain from fresh for your next ship. Another resource for us all is to watch Twitch streamers. And to get benefit off of that, we want to have our Wargaming account linked for monthly bonus containers, monthly missions. And this month, for example, we can earn five missions that give resources and five containers. And also, because of the Kings, King of the Seas competition that during the next four weekends, we can earn up to seven King of the Seas collection containers. Now, this collection awards a Tier 7 premium ship container, which gives us a Tier 7 premium ship for free. And there are 16 pieces in the collection. We can earn 8 this update alone. That's double the normal month. Now, these tend to be pretty early in the morning. Going to want to check the World of Warships news page for the schedule. And there's one each day of the stream, starting this Sunday, which would be the 25th, I believe, <clears throat> of April. And then two next weekend. and to each of the weekends after that until all seven of the competition are done. Now, the five Twitch containers, just to give you an example how beneficial they are, those will award you 500,000 credits and around 75 consumables. That's just one month, so these add up over a year. And also, if you do watch Twitch streamers, make sure you either, you know, that you enter the raffles that a lot of the World of Warships community contributors frequently have during their streams. They can give away everything from really good community contributor uh, camouflage, which have good perks to community contributor containers, sometimes even premium ships. And the containers give lots of XP or consumables, sometimes even ships as well. They're, they're pretty good containers. And you might just get lucky. And if you really like a streamer, consider checking out their Discord channels also, because a lot of the more established streamers especially, they do, an, they do other giveaways on that forum. One other thing to note about uh, Twitch is that if you happen to be an Amazon Prime member, then you also do get Twitch Prime or Prime Gaming account for free. And this allows you to access the Twitch Prime gaming bundles each month. And sometimes these are quite good. Like last month, there was five of the 6,000 coal Regia Marina containers. And this month is a premium Legion of Honor container and also 20 of the Italian camouflage. So these are quite strong. The container, this container this month will give us pieces to the Legion of Honor collection, which can then be completed through daily containers. 
Now, for those who plan to spend your hard-earned doubloons, here are some value tips. Buying any new release ships, like anything else in this world, PC parts, for example, building computers, is always the most expensive right at release. So be cautious about how bad you really need that. During the late summer of World of Warships during their anniversary week is usually the best prices on selected premium ships. Choose very wisely if you do buy a ship, though. Look for something that you're already somewhat familiar with in the type of playstyle you enjoy, you know, the class. You, do you like playing battleships? Fast, slow? You know, pick, pick something that complements your, your capabilities. And, and definitely consider buying something that's in a line you're working on, because then you can move your captains from tech tree to the premium ship and back, and that allows you to train them much more quickly. Also, and probably the best value for your doubloons is between Christmas and New Year's during that holiday period. Premium time for the last three years has gone on sale for 50% of the cost for the biggest packages. So a 12 month, for example, is normally 24,000 doubloons here in North America. It goes on sale for half that, for 12,000. And that offers by far the best value for doubloons in the game. Giving that extra 50% credits and 50% or 65% experience depending on general wargaming account or across um, just world of worship specific well this has certainly been a lot of information for people to absorb and feel free to reach out ask me if there's anything you have questions about i'm sure there's lots also check in my comments below this youtube video and you should be able to find links to more in-depth videos that i've referenced through the throughout this video and also I will timestamp this video, so if there's specific parts you want to revisit, it'll save you just hunting through the video. The other option you have, drop in on one of my Twitch streams. I'll be happy to run a ship with you or for you, answer any questions the best I can. Well, thank you all very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And until the next time, good hunting.